Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today, I will be unboxing... <laughs> I'm looking for... What side of the bag are we on? The camellia is here. My birthday present uh, that was gifted to me for my birthday. It comes a little bit late. Mm, I did actually get this a couple of days after my birthday, but... As I'm unboxing it now, it's way past my birthday. So for all of you who have wished me all the best for my birthday, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I felt loved. And I feel even better now that I get to unbox this, even though it's a bit late. But it's never late in the game to unbox a birthday present, especially never late in the game to unbox a Chanel. So I am so thrilled. Now this, of course, you know, I wished this. Tissue paper. The harmonica. I always love my ASMR, so let's do a little bit of it. Okay. Ooh, the box opened a little bit. Okay. So, it's a bit busted because where was it? Down here. Poor little box. It doesn't matter though. What's inside is not busted. Um, it's a shoe box. It's another shoe. You're going to be like, okay, you're crazy. It's officially, yes, I have my obsessions. And this birthday present is super special. Two, you know, pouches. Because it's two shoes. <laughs> I mean, one pair. I mean, okay, so this took a while because there was only one boutique that still had them in my size and it took forever ordering it, uh, whether or not it was going to be transferred or not because of the situation we're in right now. But then finally, they arrived, unfortunately, after the price increase. But I mean, come on. <laughs> Look at this color. Okay, for those of you who are new to my channel uh, and are thinking, what the heck, he's just uh, got uh, um, shoes with the heel, the Chanel two-tone slingbacks, by the way. Check out my other Chanel um, slingback unboxings where I explain heels and men, just like perfumes and men. Everything is uh, genderless, really. Wear what you love, not what other people tell you you should wear. Plus, heels were invented for men. Later on, they started being used by women, too, anyway. Not to justify anything, because I really don't care what you think about whether or not something should be worn or not, because you do you, I do me. But I'm saying this because, historically, it is so important to understand where design comes, comes from, where particular tendencies come from, where aesthetics come from they don't come from what some bully told you uh in whatever grade uh, in high school or university while you were being bullied that's not where certain designs and tendencies come from that's just weakness that tries to push you into not expressing yourself the way you are not being who you are that has nothing to do with the history and the evolution of design and design heritage uh, in particular Nothing to do with Chanel, because she was a trailblazer when it comes to experimenting, blending genders, uh, using male uh, jockey outfits, uh, matelassé, pleating, plating, whatever have you, and then implementing that in bags and dresses. And here we, here we go with the two-tone shoe and the heel. Now, this is Virginie Viard's first collection for Chanel. This is from the Cruise 2019 collection, the pink two-tone slingbacks. What is important to note here, this is tweed, it's a cotton tweed, and the front has this uh, gros grand butt. Very, very interesting. Unlike all the other slingbacks that I have from Chanel, these have something very, very special. They're not made in that wavy pattern that the other ones are, that most of them are, but they're made in the original uh, Grogram material or pattern or if you want style that Coco actually used in the 50s. So 
when we come in as close as we can, we can see here a little white thing which I have to take off. <laughs> dust. And dust reflects. Okay, I have to take that off. Whatever. I'll take it off later. So, but you can see how pebbly this looks. There are no waves. Now, I'm going to. Let me just put here a photo so you see how the other ones look like, actually, uh, at the tip. But then also, let's put in the other picture of these. I'll photograph them later so you get to see uh, how this one looks side by side with the other version. So very interesting to have this as well in my collection because um, the amazing thing, it's like we're getting closer and closer to the original. Now, of course, Chanel, you know, she did not put her logo there. There was no double C logo on the original two-tone slingbacks. And truth be told, the original did not have such thick a heel. This heel came in the 60s. Chanel developed this heel a bit later, but the first two-tone had kind of a, not really a kitten heel, because a kitten heel would be lower. It was this height, but it was a thinner heel. And then the thicker one was developed in the 60s, 70s, and then discontinued. And then Lagerfeld brought it back a couple of years ago in the Brasserie collection. Funny enough to note, in the Brasserie collection, most of them, the first one to be brought back was suede, also in my collection. But on the runway, they still did not have the double C on the heel. The actual prototypes and samples that hit the runway uh, didn't have the logo. The logo was added upon arrival of the shoes into retail. So uh, most of the prototypes you're going to see from the runway don't have the double C on the side. But ever since that Brasserie collection hit stores up until this day, 2020, um, all of the sling of the two-tone sling bags have the double C on the outer side on, on both shoes, on the outside there. On the inside, they don't. Now, there is a wonderful new rose version from the Metier Da collection, which I'm also obsessing on. I just, I just don't, what am I going to do with another sling back? It's not pink. This is more of a shocking pink. They look gorgeous on the foot. I mean, gorgeous, like shocking pink, super pop, very Pedro Almodovar, very high heels, the movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Victoria Brill wears Chanel the whole time through, and her mother, Marisa Paredes, wears, um, or Becky Del Paramo, is her character in the movie, wears Armani. So you have this juxtaposition of early 90s, we're talking 1990, 1991, early 90s poppy Chanel colors, all the intense reds and pinks um, mixed with black on Victoria Abril. And then Marisa Paredes has more gray tones, more the elegant hues of, of early 90s Armani. So juxtaposing those two colors and also how their passions work of these two characters. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. That's a great example of when um, costume, not just costume design, but just styling of a movie. Really, really, you can see how fashion helps accentuate the characters, how fashion helps accentuate the story, push the story forward, and how it brings it to a whole fetishy level where you kind of just dream with those characters. Also, thanks not just to the amazing writing and direction and acting and casting, but also because the clothes really, mm, they're delicious. They're supple, you know what I mean? So this brings me back to that era uh, of Chanel. And I think in many ways Virginie Via is kind of also, I mean, she acknowledges that era and I think she, she likes that era too. And maybe she's also playing into that era because she knows that was a very popular era for Chanel. And maybe if she's clever, she's, she would do more pieces looking like from that era with those colors at least, because that's easy for her to sell in a way because those pieces sell themselves almost, you know what I mean? So in a way, it wouldn't be like too much, it wouldn't be too Lagerfeld, or it wouldn't be too much trying to rely on him. It would Because those 90s pieces, yes, they're him, but they're so 90s Chanel that they have kind of transcended him. And I think it's something similar Donatella Versace did before she sold to Coors. Uh, 
when was it around 2009 10 when she kind of started realizing oh i really need to homage more you know Gianni's area the, the 90s era uh versace if i want to sell more so she started kind of dedicating more i mean she was doing one to one literally like tributes but like knockoffs of the originals i mean it's still versace but not really bringing much forward the design um there's a lot that you could do with versace for sure but similar to that i think virginie via could play into that more and would definitely be successful in terms of sales just putting it out there a free tip for me to you chanel so that that's that uh 42c i've mentioned this in my other videos but i'm going to say it here again um is the biggest size they produce 42 in this particular model chanel still does make some models for men not the slingbacks you know they have some sneakers and some leather shoes for men and they go up to 45 46 even i don't know if they go even higher but these go up to 42 c means that it's the width this is the widest version there's a 42 classic which is a 42 b usually the b won't be printed at the bottom here here we have a c printed next to the 42 the c means the width they're a bit wider without the c on it it's a b without the c they're narrower. I've tried the 42 in leather, too tight for me. I need the C, I need that width. So, and of course, in all sizes, they, with every size, you can choose a B or a C. So remember that if you're purchasing Chanel shoes because they don't just offer length, they also offer width sizes, which is great. I mean, you're paying for luxury, might as well. You know, the more added, uh, details to how a shoe is produced, what went into production. The more alterations go into the final product, the closer we get to true luxury. True luxury being actually having something made to fit you, made to measure, made to fit. Uh, that's not the case with these. But you could go haute couture, and then they would make it to fit your foot. But then the price would have a couple of zeros more added after the, the actual retail price of them. Anything else to state? Uh, this is not the end for my love of Chanel slingbacks, for sure. I mean, every time I look at them and see them, I just go more bonkers and I just want more of them. Um, of course, the beige version is my favorite in terms of, you know, the first one I unboxed because it's the leather version and um, goat skin, but Color-wise, these are my favorite ones. I mean, I love my gold ones from the Metier d'Art last year. Those are in lambskin. So I have lambskin, goatskin, suede, and then we have tweed now. Uh, but the co color-wise, these rock, man. These are just beyond. They're just so timeless pop and bubblegum pink. Come on. Now, the ones I'm looking to get maybe next are the rose tweed from Metier d'Art 2020. But, of course... <sighs> We have the markup, they cost more now. Um, and it's a much lighter tone. It's not this kind of flashy Barbie pink. Uh, it's, it's, it's rose, it's more a subdued rose. But the tweed has a wonderful pattern. Now this tweed you can see is, it's like a towel tweed and the base of this tweed is black. So uh, it's really hard to see. just looks pink you know but underneath those waves there's a black canvas and the black kind of slightly shimmers through the pink and this is why this pink appears from a distance to be more intense because black is not a color really black is well all the colors together are actually white so black is kind of absence of color but in this case it's a mixture of a lot of colors and usually black has a blue base or a red base in this case it has a blue base technology like how to obtain black it's always tricky you have to like point a spotlight onto the black color that you have and you're going to see shimmer through the base it's either blue or red there's this one company i forget its name in japan that does a very deep black uh velvet curtains for theater and they cost a lot because to the tint to get that color that intense and that deep black it just costs so much and uh, they do that because in theater when you you know if, if a director needs really black uh, 
And with all the intense spotlights that are available in theater, you know, when you project a black spotlight, when you project a spotlight onto the black color, if it's a very intense light, it's going to show, it's going to tickle through to the surface the original base coat, which is either blue or red. And that can be really limiting to, to the expressivity or the expression that you need to use within a theater piece. And if you need to render something, colors are very important in theater, in, in life in general, but also in theater. So this company specialized in making this pure, as pure as it can be, black, uh, in particular for theater. But then you could also order this material for your clothing if you wanted to. It just costs uh, too much. So I don't think that Chanel invested in that. If I were to really project an intense light here, I would probably see blue as the base. But in general, this whole pink has a lot of blue in it. It's a very blue heavy pink hue. And the black contributes to that as well. So there you have it, a bit of, uh, I don't know, a lesson on colors and coloring fabrics. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please do thumb it up. Subscribe to my channel here on YouTube if you haven't already. Um, and also click that notifications button because if you don't, uh, then YouTube won't notify you that a new video has been uploaded to my YouTube channel. Even though you're subscribed to it, you won't, they won't let you know <laughs> that a new video is there. Cuckoo, crazy, but that's what it is. Uh, so yeah, if you wish to subscribe, click the notifications button too. Like this video if you like it. And I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. Super Decob all spelled together. And also I have two new profiles dedicated to Chanel where you get to see this shoe and a lot more special, special stuff. One of the profiles is called Coco Chanel is in my house. All spelled together where you get to see my whole collection, detailed photos of it and my obsession about all the designers that have worked for Chanel. And then there's a second profile called Coco Chanel Privé also all spelled together, where I showcase the life of Chanel, uh, photos of her during her life and her work and everything that she personally designed and slash or made, as well as the perfumes, everything done basically up until January 1971, which is the date she died. So that's that. And, you know, as the month of August approaches uh, um, and Chanel's birthday is the 19th of August, those Instagram um, profiles are going to have particularly a lot more uh, details, a lot more information happening, especially Coco Chanel Privé is going to be a party celebrating Coco's uh, birthday, which is coming up next month. Thank you guys so much for watching. Till next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.